Hi there, this is Steve, K2GOG with Hudson Valley Digital Network, and today we're going to spend time showing how to get SDR Angel software working under Windows 10. And quite a lot has happened since the last video that I've done uh, three years ago. And so we're going to start from scratch here. This is a Windows 10 environment on a 64-bit computer. I'm going to go ahead, open up a favorite uh, browser, type in SDR Angel. And what we're going to look for in the search results is github.com slash sdrangel slash releases. Uh, here we can see the author's uh, amateur radio call sign, Edward F4EXB. He's the primary author. We'll go ahead and uh, click into that. And now we are looking at the latest release, uh, which was uh, three days ago on November 15th, version 6.0.2. And to date, there's been over 230 releases of this software since its inception. And so what we're going to look for today is what's going to help us get this working underneath a Windows environment. In this case, we need to just download this file, SDR Angel 6.0.2, Win64.exe. So go ahead, give that a click. It'll take a little bit to uh, download the 83 megabyte file. And we'll just wait for that to finish up. I'm going to go ahead and hit the open when done. And you might get a protection screen such as this, depending on how your security is configured. Go ahead and run it anyway. And this is going to start the installation process. So let's go ahead and follow the normal prompts, close the browser out. And we'll just go through the normal things. If you need to set a system path, set it for all users. And if you want a desktop icon, you can click mark that off now. So go ahead, finish this up. Now for this demonstration, uh, we're going to plug in a rtlsdr.com version 3 SDR dongle. It's by far the least expensive but most feature-rich uh, software-defined radio available on the market today. And it also has a number of unique features that work fantastic within SDR Angel. So let's go ahead and finish that up. And then we'll do a quick search for the software. Now, this demonstration is going to use the RTL SDR version 3. There will be a follow up video that shows some of the functionality that SDR Angel offers that supports transmit capable devices such as a Lime SDR Mini. So let's go ahead and uh, make this full screen. And we'll just make a couple little uh, tweaks here before we get going. So, the first most important thing to do is before you go to run the SDR Angel software, go ahead and plug in your SDR dongle. If you do that, it should automatically recognize the device, but if it didn't and you want to plug it in after you run the software, you can simply go up here towards the top, hit the reload device button, and it should rescan your system and look for your dongle. Or you could also click the button to its immediate left called change device, and you'll have a little box where you can select the correct SDR that you would like to use with SDR Angel. So in this case, it's uh, version 001. I'm going to go ahead and hit OK. So now we're pretty much ready to go. But first things first, we want to configure a few things. So go ahead, set the gain to somewhere about middle, you know, 25, 28 or so, should be fine. Let's go ahead and change the decimation. This is how fast the waterfall is going to refresh on the bottom of the screen. So let's go ahead and select two for that. And then the next thing we're going to do is click this button right here, automatic DC offset. Click that and there will be a spike that would normally appear on the center of your display. And this function turns that off. So go ahead, turn that on. And then the last thing that we're going to do is change the baseband sample rate, which means how much spectrum you're going to be able to sample at one time. Now, in the case of an RTL SDR version 3, you can get up to about 3 megahertz. Um, if you have a really fast uh, computer, you can go higher, but you might just want to go a little bit more narrow. So for us, we're going to do not 500 kilohertz, and we can see roughly 500 kilohertz on the bottom of the display. Now, if I go back and we'll change it up to one megahertz wide, uh, we can see that. 
So you can see now it's from 434.5 to 435.5. So now let's go ahead and start our initial frequency that we would like to start testing with. So for me, I'm going to select 162475, which is National Weather Broadcast, in my area. And now we hit the play button. So as we can see on the waterfall, we can see a very strong signal exactly at 162,475. And if we go ahead and increase the gain, you can see that there's some other stuff to its immediate left and to its right on 162.4 and 162.55. So now what we want to do is show you how to actually listen to the signals. But before we do that, we could make some changes on the spectrum display. So if we click this button, now we can see a waterfall and a spectrum graph in yellow. If we hit the red button, it gives us a peak hold. And if you want to move things around, you can simply drag these up and down. Or you could hit this button all over here, exchange waterfall and histogram. And it flips them around like that. If you shut these off, the histograms, you could even change the direction of the waterfall like that. And you can go forwards or reverse, depending on what you have a preference for. So let's go ahead and turn those back on. I'll move that back down here like so. And now what makes SDR Angel fairly unique is that you have to tell it what mode you want to monitor. And you go up here towards the top, you click channels, and then you select what you want. So starting from the bottom, we have a simple wide FM demodulator, which is for FM uh, broadcast. There's also another version of that called Broadcast FM Demodulator, which is roughly the same thing, just with a few different feature changes. Then we have a single sideband demodulator, uh, which is helpful for those interested in high frequency or HF communications between 1 to 30 megahertz, as well as for those interested in satellite transponders uh, that are currently in use across various uh, amateur radio uh, pockets of. Uh, enthusiasts. If you do want to use the single sideband demodulator on HF, the way that you would do that is I'll close that out. You just have to go over here to the left. There's a little button that says no mod DS or special direct sampling mode. If you click mark that, it'll allow your radio to tune below 24 megahertz. So if you want to go to say the amateur radio 40 meter band or 20 meter band, or 10 meter band, you can do that if you want to go all the way below, say maybe the broadcast AM band, you can do that if you should choose. But for now, we're going to focus on using VHF UHF. So let's go ahead, we'll go back and change the frequency to 162.475. And you could just use the up and down arrows on your keyboard to change that. And you just click into the appropriate spot and you can move things around relatively easily. And what we're going to do now is just go back and increase the gain like that. And now we're going to go here and review what's left. So we have narrow FM, which is for amateur analog and commercial user communications. There's free digital voice or free DV, which is based off of Codec 2, which is a uh, non-commercial standard being developed across the amateur radio population as an alternative to many of the commercial modes that are covered under DSDD modulator. So things such as uh, DMR, Yesu F Fusion, ICOM D-Star, uh, P25, Nextgen, and for those in Europe, DPMR. And we'll do a little of a bit of a demo on that later. And then we have some visual modes such as digital amateur television. You could do a search for DATV and uh, Sarah, who runs the very popular YouTube channel called Signals Everywhere. Um, she has some really great uh, tutorials regarding that. And then we have the older legacy standard called ATV or amateur television, 
Uh, this allows you to look at transmissions in NTSC and PAL, which are no longer used by commercial uh, broadcasters. So you have two different ways to look at visual video signals, as well as a number of digital audio and analog audio. Then we get into some of the digital modes, such as Chirp Chat, which is also something relatively new to SDR Angel. This allows you to decode LoRa and other digital uh, text-based communications. So one example of that is the HVDN Has Violet project, which does use LoRa on the 900 megahertz frequency band. You could also demodulate other signals that uh, will be in use in your area, such as utility meters and other Internet of Thing type of devices. And then wrapping it up, we uh, close out with um, amplitude modulation. Again, a, a legacy mode for those interested. Uh, 80 meters late at night, you can typically listen to amateur radios in the 3.8 megahertz, 3.9 megahertz range using high fidelity um, AM. And then lastly, and probably one of the biggest differentiators of SDR Angel is the new ADSB demodulator. And this will allow you to decode aircraft transmissions and look at them live on a map in terms of what their location is, their speed, their heading, all sorts of great uh, data that you could pull from aircraft in real time on 1.09 gigahertz, as well as 978 megahertz in the United States. And so that is something that really sets apart SDR Angel. If you're looking for one piece of software-defined radio software that does a lot, SDR Angel is really hard to beat. So now let's go and explore some of the really unique ways that you can use STR Angel. So let's go ahead. We'll select a NFM demodulator. And if we hit apply, Mostly clear. we could hear the local weather broadcast coming through. So I'm just going to go ahead and give that a mute. You could press any of these buttons and it tells you what that is. So you could unmute it, make the audio go to your left or your right speaker. You can change the volume. You can change the squelch. You can change it to auto squelch. You could even change the FM deviation as well as the audio frequency. If you want something that's a little bit more full, you can change that. You could easily even change the step size and the overall RF bandwidth. And then lastly, you could even set a PL tone if you need to filter out signals that are still using that standard, such as uh, amateur radio repeaters. So let's go ahead and add a second demodulator. So let's say, for example, if we want to listen to two different stations, we can do that at the same time. So the way that we do that, given that our receiver is tuned to 162475, you can easily change the frequency shift within the receiver tuning range. So for us, we can listen to any station or signal between 162 and 163 megahertz. And if we just click, quickly click into that, you'll notice underneath the waterfall, there's a little box changing and I'm moving the frequency in real time. So we'll go ahead and put that here on 162.550. And we're going to drop the squelch down and we're going to increase the audio frequency a little bit and now if I unmute this today northwest winds 20 to 30 knots see 7 to 13 feet you can hear Tonight, a weather broadcast a little bit weaker than the other and if I unmute this one Tuesday, see to 12 feet. if you listen carefully you'll be able to hear both at the same exact time and if we wanted to, we can change the speakers. And now the hour of the information will have to be on the left and the right. Hearing the two feet down. Friday, southwest winds 20 to 25 knots. It will see the eight. And you can do this for as many different uh, decoders as your computer will tolerate. So this might be a handy feature especially for those that are amateur radio operators or those looking to monitor uh, public safety, you can um, monitor many frequencies at the same exact time as long as they're within the tuning bandwidth of your software-defined radio. Now, if we change tracks, 
we can go back and experiment with decoding digital voice. So we'll go up here, select the DSD demodulator, and hit OK. And for this demonstration, we'll change to my uh, frequency used by my amateur radio hotspot, which I currently have on 432585. We're going to turn the gain down because it's a strong signal given how close it is. And as we can see, there is a signal apparent. And if we click this little blue blinking light, you can hear the other station's audio coming through. Now, one of the nice features with um, DMR in particular is you can have two conversations at the same time on the same frequency. And this is known as uh, time, del uh, time delay multiple access. And so you can toggle these buttons on and off to see if there's uh, signals that you want to listen to on either of the two time slots. And so this is very easy to set up and configure. As we can see, you could also change this function over here. If you want to listen to something that uses a Nexten or DPMR, you simply change the baud rate to 2.4 kilohertz. Or if you want to listen to modes such as DMR, Fusion, and D-Star, you change it to the 4.8 kilohertz uh, setting. And so there you have it. Those are some of the basic functions that we have with an SDR Angel. And hopefully this was a useful video to you. Thanks and have a great day.